Good afternoon. I uh, have uh, some information here that is pretty concerning. And to be real honest, and I, I really, I, I really hate saying this kind of stuff, but I think it's time that we raise our own personal alert levels a little bit and uh, make sure that we got things. I know I, I always say make sure you got things in order, make sure your batteries are charged and stuff like that. But just, you know, cross your T's, dot your I's, go through all the motions, check everything again. Um, got something very concerning coming out and... Um, BP Earth Watch is where I first heard about it at, and I, I clicked the links and stuff like that because I don't just take, you know, people's word for stuff. I, I do look to try to source information, and I have actually been able to, to do that, um, and it's kind of concerning. In fact, BP's video is just basically playing a, a video from, uh, from them that was subtitled, but the article... The article, oh my goodness. So, and I'm going to link it in the description of the video as well as the first comment as usual. And it's going to come up in, I'm assuming that's Greek, I think. I don't, I don't know if that's Russian. It shows whenever I, I'm on Chrome, on Windows, and I can right click. You won't see my right click, and I can click translate to English. And that's why I was going to tell you guys. Uh, but it says Greek, so I thought it looked like Russian to me, but I, I don't know either language, so I couldn't tell you. Anyway, um, translated to English, it says, official admit British commandos are fighting in Ukraine. Russian commander says next escalation will be nuclear, filling silos with ICBMs, YARS. Um, this, this is something that we really better note and note close. Please, it, share the article, share this video, whichever is easier. Just know that anyone that clicks on the link to the article needs a way to be able to translate it to English unless they can read that language. So, anyway, let me go ahead and go through the article because this is, again, this is serious. This is this is no, no joke at all. Uh, for the first time since the start of the war in Ukraine, there is an official admission of British Special Forces involvement. We've actually covered that. RT has come out with headlines, and we covered that. In fact, I think we covered it last night, if not the night before. And anyway, it goes on to say, according to the Russians, <clears throat> British forces are present in every armed formation in Ukraine. The British plan and direct deep strikes deep into Russian supply lines they are the ones who select targets and direct the MLRS HIMARS missiles. Britain's national newspaper, The Times, reports that the Royal Marines took part in discreet operations on Ukrainian soil lasting several months, it said. The article quotes statements by Major General Robert McGowan in the British Armed Forces Gazette. McGowan is a former com commandant of the Royal Marines, having joined the elite Royal Navy unit in 1989. The lieutenant general in his introduction states that the commandos had supported discrete operations in a highly sensitive environment or operations involved high political and military risk. Now, um... This here goes on to say, regarding the details of McGowan's statement, the Times article states, In the Globe and Laurel, the official publication of the Royal Marines, it described how 350 Marines from 45 command-escorted diplomats from the British Embassy in, Ky uh, well, in Kiev or in Poland earlier this year when it became clear that Russian troops were preparing to invasion. Commandos returned to Kiev in April to protect the, protect the embassy as Britain sought to restore its diplomatic presence there. Prior to the statement, information about the presence of American and British troops, not just mercenaries, was strongly dismissed as untrue by the majority of the media. Russian President Vladimir Putin has described events in Ukraine as a conflict between Russia and the entire Western military apparatus and claimed in September that entire military units in Ukraine were de facto under the command of Western advisors. 
Putin's estimates were rejected. There was no evidence of the involvement of NATO ground forces in Ukraine. Edward Arnold from the London-based think tank Royal United Services Institute told the BBC and added, There are also no NATO commanders directing Ukrainian units on the battlefield. It is also highly unlikely that this will happen in the future as NATO tries to mitigate the risks of escalation. Yeah, I don't know how true that is right now. Uh, McGowan refutes him in the global law. Uh, and this here says in January this year, 45 commando group moved a, at short distance in the middle of the dark winter of northern northern Norway to evacuate the British embassy in Kyiv, Poland. The International Response Force, 999 if you will, then in April, they returned to the country to restore the diplomatic mission and protect key personnel. In both phases, the commandos also supported other discrete operations in a highly sensitive and high civil and military risk environment. <clears throat> the aforementioned 45th Command Base at the RM Condor Base in Arbroath, Scotland, on the North Sea coast, specializes in Arctic warfare, according to the Times. The Times article explains that earlier in the year, the commando unit took apart or took part in exercises in Norway when it was briefly transferred to Poland to help with the evacuation while training in the frozen mountains and fjords above the Arctic Circle. <clears throat> uh, McGowan also, uh, I think that they spelled it wrong that time, also confirmed support for the training of Ukrainian soldiers praising the role of the Marines in training the armed forces of Kiev. The general wrote, in addition to broader defense, we have been heavily involved in training hundreds of Ukrainian servicemen this summer. We also plan to train Ukrainian Marines. It is the first time the military had admitted that British forces were also involved in special operations while in Ukraine. Remember in the video the presence of American soldiers in Ukraine. And then uh, they got a video here. Again, I'll, link, I'll put the link to this article down. Uh, in the comments and in the description. But let's get to what we really need to be concerned about. Russian commander says the next escalation will be nuclear. Russia is unable to defeat the NATO bloc without using nuclear weapons, a Russian commander has admitted. Alexander Khodorkovsky, commander of Russian forces in Donetsk, stressed that Russia is fighting against the entire Western world. So the next escalation of the war in Ukraine can only be one nuclear. I know I keep saying it wrong. We know our capabilities. We realize the limit of our resources. If NATO countries exceed certain limits, like dispatching of leopard, uh, leopards, sorry, leopard tanks, they are very close to crossing the red line. Everyone realizes that the next escalation will be nuclear. We do not have the capabilities to defeat the NATO bloc by conventional means, but we have the nuclear weapons for that. That's why there is only one option, said Mr. Kodovakovsky. I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong. This here, Yars and Silos operational mode. This is what we really need to be paying attention to. The Kremlin has not commented on these statements of the Russian commander, but a development shows that Moscow is intensively prepping or preparing for such a moment. Russia's Yars intercontinental ballistic missile has been siloed at the Kozelk, uh, Kozelsk uh, formation in central Russia's Kulaga region, the Russian defense ministry announced today, and will now be ready for operational use. The news was reported by the Russian state news agency, TASS, while the commander of the Strategic Forces Formation stated that this is an extremely positive development because now the Yars intercontinental ballistic missile can be put into operational operation according to the schedule as planned, thus strengthening the Russian strategic missile forces. <clears throat> Russian tabloid newspaper, uh, let's see, Kamsomolot, I can't say that, Pravda, I can't say the first word there, uh, reported that the Yars missile complex, uh, let's see, which was loaded in the Kaluga region, has a power of 12 times greater than the American bomb that destroyed Hiroshima, 
referring to the atomic weapon that fell on the Japanese city on August 6, 1945. The mass circulation newspaper report outlined some of the missile specifications which include a launch weight of 46,000 tons, an operational range of up to 12,000 kilometers or 7,456 miles that can hit the U.S. or anywhere in Europe and a payload of up to 500 kilotons. The RS-24 Yars is an improved version of the earlier Topol M known as, uh, in the West as the SS-29. It was developed by the Moscow Institute of Thermal Engineering and was first tested in 2007. Able to prepare for launch in seven minutes, the missile can be launched from a prepared site, a special silo with a sliding roof, or from an unprepared position during battlefield deployment. The Russian Defense Ministry said on Wednesday that the missile was installed in the silo using a transport and loading unit in an operation that lasted several hours. <clears throat> Vadim Vyrovsky, an engineer, said, I am proud of Russia that my country puts into operation such products that the motherland can sleep peacefully. Yars was put on display in October during military exercises in Russia's strategic nuclear forces overseen by Vladimir Putin. Igor Kachenko uh, then told the Russia One Channel that it is very important to show who our main opponent is and what awaits him. <clears throat> More video content there. So, anyway, I will put the link to this down in the description and in the first comment. This is, um, this is something we better keep an eye on. Please make sure you've got stuff ready to go the best you can. Anyway, until later during the live show, Shalom.